Cook Flowers, it's Kristen, and welcome back to my channel, and welcome to today's video, which basically is my favorite modern classics. Now, what is a modern classic, you might be asking? Well, it's a book within the last 70 years or so, I say 1950 is like the cutting mark for it basically, that already is proving to stand the test of times and be exceptional and phenomenal. So today I'm here to share with you 10 of the modern classics that I've read that are my favorite. Before I go into it though, if you haven't subscribed, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to go ahead and give this video a like, that would be great. So we're going in chronological order here. And the first favorite modern classic of mine is a book that came out in 1951. We are talking about The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. So this book follows the story of the rare and precious gem that is Holden Caulfield. It's a coming of age story where he leaves his boarding school, goes into the wilds of the city, and is kind of torn apart at his innocence. And it's while it's beautiful, it's also quite sad. Holden is this really sensitive creature who's really attuned to beauty. And um, he basically sees kind of the depth and the darkness of the world and wishes that it was more innocent than it is. Okay, moving on. Um, this is also a pretty heavy book. But the next book that is my favorite is The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. This book came out in 1952 and like its title, it really does follow an old man who goes out into the sea and his struggle to catch this great fish or I think it's called a marlin. All right, moving on to favorite modern classic number three, we have The Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. Not to be confused with The Invisible Man by H.G. Wells, this one is about an unnamed protagonist, important, who moves from the deep south to the city and really into Harlem, and it follows lots of horrible struggles he encounters in the city, such as like um, a battle royale where black men are forced to fight against animals, um, a communist rally, all of these different situations that kind of just increase in horror. And Ellison's book is really like an exploration into prejudice and harsh truths. This book to me is a book that hurts, but reading it, I found it to be super important. The next book that is one of my favorite modern classics of all time is Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. This book came out in 1953. And basically, imagine a world where firefighters start fires. Particularly, they start to catch books on fire because that's what happens. It's a world where people don't really read at all and um, they're more just consumed with like their own self. They speed down the roads like at ridiculous speeds. In one example, um, a woman keeps having to get her stomach pumped because she keeps overdosing on sleeping pills on purpose. But no one talks about what's actually going on. It is a creepily frightening dystopian reflection that could very well be a reflection of our current society or at least what it could become. So it's a wonderful read that I recommend everyone pick up at some point because it kind of alerts you to real issues that we have in our world today. Okay, book number five on my list of my favorite modern classics of all time is The Lord of the Flies. This book came out in 1954 and imagine a group of boys stranded on an island. At first you think it would be fun times, you know, sit around the fire, kill a pig, roast it, but it's way, way more than that. It's basically about the destruction of innocence, the loss of childhood. Things quickly go from fun times to a battle to survive on the island. Um, if you know the TV show Survivor, just kind of take that, except add more gruesome murders and children 
and you've got Lord of the Flies. The next book that's one of my favorite modern classics is Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achibi. And this book came out in 1958. So at its surface, it's the story of a strong man whose life is kind of dominated by fear and anger. But the reason for this fear and anger has to do with like these clashes going on in his culture and his tribe. So you have like the struggle between colonialism and like your tribe and Christianity and like the tribal religion. So it's really like a historical perspective on a time in Africa that's become fictionalized. The writing is so beautiful and different and, and kind of mystic and also kind of like myth at the same time. It's a wonderful read and I highly recommend it. All right, then we move on into 1960 and the book I'm recommending to you is one you've surely heard of that is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. The story of the finches. We've got Scout and Jim and Atticus living in good old sleepy, not actually good Maycomb. And the story kind of centers around when this black man is put on trial and Atticus, the father, steps up as the lawyer who will represent him. And everyone in Maycomb goes crazy because they don't want Atticus representing a black man because they feel like, well, let's be, be honest, they're very prejudiced against black people. So Atticus decides to stand up for the man in court and be his lawyer, but the racist town really hates that. And it's kind of about the fallout around that and centers around the trial. And it's also a story of family and friendship and prejudice and growing up. And it's very sweet and also very powerful. All right, the next book that I'd like to recommend is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. This book came out in 1963 and it follows the downward spiral of our poor main character, Esther Greenwood. She's brilliant, she's beautiful, but she's struggling mentally with lots of different things, depression, anxiety, etc. And so you kind of just experience Esther's mind as she goes through this downward spiral. And of course, it's written in Sylvia Plath's beautiful poetic prose. It's truly something unique. And I think that's really a thread about all of these books I'm recommending is that they have some aspect of them that is just completely unlike anything else. And that's why they're modern classics. Um, we're moving on to our final two modern classics. And our next one is from 1969. That is I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. So this is a fictionalized memoir of Maya Angelou's life that kind of follows her as she grows up and in it you see um, her experiences with prejudice and you see her experiences within her family. You also see how falling in love with books and words was like a way to really raise her up from her situation that she was in growing up and I related so, so much to that because books have always been my way of transcending whatever situation I am in. And so um, I would never t attempt to compare myself to Maya Angelou, but I definitely could relate to um, what she considered one of the most important aspects of her, which was her love of reading and books. And finally, moving on to our last book, my last favorite, number 10, we have The Secret History by Donna Tartt. We've got a little jump in uh, publication time. This one came out in 1992 and follows a boy who goes off to this um, elite prestigious university and he joins this Greek society basically, but they are not as happy and joy as they seem on the outside. In fact, one night they go out into the woods and do something that changes the course of everything. It's thrilling and spooky and psychological and the founder of the dark academia genre actually. So definitely deserves its place in my top 10 favorite modern classics of all time. And there you have it. <laughs> that is my top 10 favorite modern classics. If you've made it this far, thanks so much. Um, I love you. And definitely leave me a comment. Let me know what are some of your favorite modern classics or do you have most of the same favorites as me? What did I miss? Let me know. And otherwise, I will speak to you very, very soon. Bye, book flowers.